I'm uh, Dr. Boriadini. I'm the head of uh, the Department for Emergency uh, Management and Disaster Medicine in the Tel Aviv uh, uh, University, the Faculty of Health uh, named uh, uh, Sackler in the uh, School of Public Health. I would like to welcome all of you to this uh, uh, webinar. What we would like to do in the webinar is actually give you the opportunity to ask questions, any question that concerns you um, regarding uh, the program, the Tel Aviv University, uh, life here in uh, uh, Tel Aviv and in Israel as a whole. And so I'd like to, first of all, uh, welcome all of you that are interested in uh, uh, the program and for joining us today. And I would also like uh, to join my uh, um, friends, the, the, the panelists, and I will introduce each one of them in, uh, in a minute. Uh, can I ask uh, David to please allow me to share my screen? Okay, you can see my screen? Yes, we can. Good, okay. I will just try to put it in presentation mode so that we can start. Okay, so as I've said, I'd like to uh, welcome all of you to uh, uh, the Tel Aviv uh, uh, University. At this point, we can only do so uh, electronically, but this is the view that you could see if you were here uh, with us. In, uh, in this webinar today, uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Gilly Shinar, who is Gilly, can you raise your hand? Thank you. Gilly is one of the founders of the program and he's the academic coordinator of both uh, uh, tracks. We have an Israeli track and an international track. We also have uh, uh, with us uh, one of our students in the current uh, uh, track, Ariel. Raise your hand. Thank you for being uh, uh, with us. And we have two of our uh, alumni, one of them from the international uh, uh, program. Uh, one is living in uh, uh, Tel Aviv, Rebecca. Can you raise your hand? Hi, everyone. Thank you, uh, Rebecca. And Zach. Zach is from Canada. Welcome, uh, uh, Zach. Uh, during this webinar, we will have the chance to hear all of uh, uh, the panelists. And I invite all of you, all of our uh, participants, you can ask uh, uh, any question that uh, you're interested in, uh, um, in um, raising. You can do so either through uh, the chat or the, the Q&A. We will try to um, have the time to uh, address all of the different uh, uh, questions that you may have. So let us start. I would like at first to introduce uh, uh, the Tel Aviv uh, uh, University. The Tel Aviv University uh, for uh, many consecutive years is the uh, most uh, uh, requested, uh, most attractive to the students um, here in uh, Israel. And when we look uh, globally, it's one of the top 100 uh, innovation university uh, globally. And we're also uh, part of the 10 top schools in producing uh, a venture capital backed uh, uh, founders. We're uh, number eight. All of our different schools and departments, and you can see that we have 125 of them, they're all uh, situated in one campus which means that you're actually, um, the students here in the university can interact and uh, uh, network with uh, many different uh, um, students and staff and faculty who come from different backgrounds, different uh, uh, types of uh, expertise. And it's all in one campus, a very green and beautiful campus. So the interaction can actually be very, very uh, uh, unique and special. We have over 2,000 students, international students, in uh, uh, the campus, um, along with uh, uh, 30,000 uh, um, overall students uh, from both Israel and uh, abroad. The students come from over 100 countries. So again, here you see a very large uh, uh, diversity. There are many programs to choose from when you come to uh, the Tel Aviv uh, University. Specifically, as we're uh, uh, talking now about the master's program, you can see that there's over 15 
different uh, master's program and over uh, uh, 20 tracks for uh, uh, PhD uh, uh, programs. Specifically today, we will focus on our program, which is the master's in uh, emergency and disaster uh, management. I also want to uh, introduce some uh, additional uh, aspects of uh, the university at large. You can see that we believe in a very strong connectivity between the universities and the field, including the industry, including the high tech uh, uh, companies and so on. So um, in, in, entrepreneurs is something that is very, very uh, vivid and uh, important in our university, which actually resulted in uh, alumni which have uh, uh, global uh, recognitions. Uh, for example, you can see uh, Benny Gantz, he's now uh, the alternative prime minister of, of uh, Israel. We have, at this point, we have a prime minister and the one that's going to replace him or, or change um, places uh, in a year and a half. So he is uh, also an alumni of uh, the Tel Aviv uh, University. We have Ilan Ramon, which is uh, one of the, he was the first Israeli astronaut, which unfortunately was uh, uh, part of the Columbia uh, mission. And so he did not uh, uh, return to Israel alive as we very much wanted, but he also uh, studied in uh, the university. And Waze, I'm sure uh, many of you are uh, familiar with the Waze. Here in Israel, everyone that drives uses the Waze uh, app. Um, that was actually uh, the founder is also an alumni of uh, the Tel Aviv uh, University. As I've said, we believe in the university that there is a very strong and important connectivity between the academic uh, staff uh, infrastructure with the field uh, uh, operators and uh, um, the latest uh, um, collaborations can actually be seen during the last four months and uh, during uh, uh, these days uh, also when the laboratories of the universities assisted in, uh, um, in, the, um, in, in the management of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. So many of the uh, testing is done in the laboratories of uh, the universities. Student life. This is something that's very important to all the um, candidates that come uh, uh, to the university. So you can see there's a very, um, very attractive also uh, student life. Uh, the university is located in Tel Aviv, which is a, a city that's called the city that never sleeps. So it, it's a wonderful place to live in. We have a support system within uh, the campus 24 seven for all uh, uh, the students. Um, in order to ease the, um, and acclimatize uh, all the candidates when they begin their studies, there is orientation days, both orienting with the university at large and with each specific uh, uh, program, of course, assistance in, in housing and in uh, scholarships, uh, excursion throughout of Israel, so that student life can be um, much easier to uh, actually um, allow you to concentrate on both studying and having fun while you're here. I want to now uh, uh, very briefly uh, describe the program and what, are, what is our vision and what is important to us and our expectations from uh, uh, the students so that you can have just uh, a general idea. And then of course, uh, I will open it uh, uh, for the comments from our other panelists and, and to all the uh, questions which you may uh, which you have. We have three elements that are the basis of our program, of the disaster management program. First is that we maintain the highest academic standards, but at the same time, we want to be very much connected to the field. So uh, one of the slogans is actually pulling theory into practice because we believe that this is something that's very important. And so you will see that uh, the faculty that teaches in the program are, um, are with expertise and they're leaders in both the academic life, but also in their field life so that they can bring the field into the academia and of course, uh, take the academic uh, and the scientific tools to uh, uh, the field. The second element is uh, um, the need to, to understand the complexity and the dynamic uh, of uh, responding to any type of, of disaster. And this is why we want to have the students very much involved in the study process itself. So the, the teaching is interactive, uh, taking into account that all of us, both the faculty and the students are responsible together 
jointly for uh, the learning process and we want to develop in each and every uh, student's innovative critical ways of thinking so that you can take these tools, these competencies to the field or if you want to uh, continue with the academic life, you can take these uh, uh, competencies and actually make a real uh, uh, contribution. Um, the third element that is very uh, important for us is the multidisciplinary uh, aspect in both the diversity of the students and the perspective of uh, uh, the courses that are learned in, uh, in uh, the, the program. So that we want to be able through this very wide perspective to teach all of our students uh, how to actually take plans and be able to implement them into interactions and at the same time in order to prepare the students for uh, uh, what is awaiting them in order to make uh, uh, their society uh, the global uh, community more uh, resilient we want them to inquire hands-on practice and this is the uh, one of the element is through uh, uh, internships which we uh, actually facilitate to uh, uh, the students when we look at uh, uh, the curriculum I told you that we're looking into an interdisciplinary uh, uh, perspective and we combine the theory with uh, uh, the applicable uh, knowledge. This can be seen uh, through the, the different courses that are integrated in, in the program. There is a very wide uh, array of uh, uh, courses and I, here on the screen you can see only a few of them. We start from humanitarian actions through uh, um, physical and mental uh, health, public policy, how do we deal with the media and risk communication, what do we do with uh, uh, legal aspects, how we, how we take into account the ethical uh, uh, elements, uh, uh, how does the legal system help us to be more prepared and to be able to uh, uh, respond. So uh, as I've said, a diversity, a very wide diversity of courses, which is integrated in uh, uh, the program. Now, one of the question is, what do we do afterwards? What are our graduates? Where do they uh, uh, go? And how are they actually uh, integrated in uh, um, the work uh, arena? So there are very uh, diverse career opportunities. Uh, first of all, um, and up until the COVID-19, the statistics show that there's a 5% uh, uh, increase of the positions in uh, uh, the last few years. And this is something that's also uh, uh, projected uh, and predicted uh, to continue. But after the, the COVID-19, this is actually going to be uh, much more expanded uh, because the positions for emergency management coordinator and specialist are rising because of the recognition of the, of the need to be able to respond, be prepared, be actually an expert in disaster management, regardless if it's a um, um, private uh, company or a public uh, institution or a governmental uh, uh, body. All of these different uh, uh, organizations need to have emergency uh, managers in order to make sure that they maintain their uh, functional continuity. So uh, we can find uh, um, many of the alumni in international aid organizations. Uh, I'll show you in a minute uh, some uh, examples in United Nation bodies, international bodies that actually um, uh, incorporate the need for emergency management for humanitarian actions. We can I mean, see them. Know. We can see them in, in healthcare, in, in security, in education. Again, a very wide uh, uh, diversity including in the uh, corporate, in the public, in the private and the governmental uh, uh, sectors. So you can see here just an example of, of uh, um, the, the different types of uh, places where you can find our alumni. So you can find them, for example, in, in uh, the Federal uh, Emergency Management uh, Agency in, in the United States. We can find them in uh, uh, different uh, uh, national or uh, uh, municipality level of governance in NGO, non-governmental uh, organizations such as uh, uh, MSF, uh, Medicines on Frontiers, um, NALA, um, other types of, of NGOs, as well as, as I've said, uh, different types of, of industry, uh, uh, cyber uh, security, 
um, high tech uh, industries and many, many uh, uh, more. Uh, I would like to uh, actually give uh, uh, the floor to our uh, um, students and alumni to uh, elaborate on, on their experience and how they uh, perceive uh, uh, the program. So uh, maybe let's start with uh, uh, Rebecca. Um, would you like to take it from your perspective? Sure. Um, so I participated in the program uh, roughly two years ago. I graduated two years ago. Um, for me, I always knew that I had an interest in studying public health. My background was in government and business. Um, and for me, the program was a perfect complement between the skills that I already had and the skills um, that I wanted to acquire. Um, specifically, I really enjoyed the coursework that was in uh, mental health and epidemiology, um, as well as the different aspects of research methods. I think it was a really um, kind of eye-opening experience to how we could gain certain practical tools um, that you need and I still use in my everyday life now um, and kind of apply them from an academic point of view and also from a practical point of view. Um, we were a relatively small cohort, so all of the classes are very hands-on, which is really quite nice. Um, you end up gaining a really, um, I guess firsthand perspective from what your professors are doing and a lot of the professors are very distinguished and they're working in top research institutions within, within Israel as well as in um, Kikuda Oref, which is the, um, in English it's Home Front Command. Um, and for those who are in the States, it kind of acts in a way of what FEMA does. Um, so you're dealing, you're, you have face-to-face -face meetings with people that are in the field every day and that's their kind of normal work, which is really important. Um, aside from that, we had a lot of hands-on experiences. Um, we were at the national drill for, um, at the airport to see kind of what happens when a, um, if there's any issues with, with, uh, air transport. Um, and so that was a really nice experience. We had an emergency, um, rescue course. So you're not just doing, um, the theory and the academic research, but the nice thing is I find myself as being kind of a, I'm pulled between both worlds of liking the hands-on experience and also loving the academic research. And so I found that this was a really nice um, combination of the two of them. Um, and if any of you are, who are on the webinar now would like to kind of know more about, about I'm doing, I work now for a nonprofit that um, we've actually been one of the big first responders, at least here in Israel and in six other countries around the world, um, responding to COVID-19 um, through local manufacturing, which has been a really interesting experience. And I know firsthand that a lot of, especially the courses um, that we had in communications in kind of emergency management communication have been like really, really, really useful. Um, so if any of you have any more questions, feel free to write in the Q&A and I'll answer them. Thank you, uh, Rebecca. And I invite all of you through the chat uh, to uh, ask, to raise your uh, questions and we will uh, address them. I would just like uh, uh, before that to uh, allow uh, uh, Zachary, who is also uh, our alumni who uh, is now in Canada to say a few words. Hi, uh, you can hear me? Yes. Well, yes, okay. Uh, my connection with uh, Zoom has been cutting in and out, so um, just bear with me if it loses connection for a minute. Uh, so I had um, a great experience with the program. I uh, loved every minute. Uh, the one thing that I absolutely uh, loved the most and I am very grateful for is the fact that it was multidisciplinary. A lot of time when you go into academic programs or practical components or practical programs, you don't get to really see the other side uh, if it's academic or practical and you always wonder uh, would you have liked this better? Would you like to do research? Would you have liked to work in the field? And this program brings all a well-rounded faster and emergency manager by the person. Sorry? No, no, you were disconnected for a minute. Oh. Let me 
We can, Let me we see can if hear I can you now. Move. You can hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Let's see this better. So uh, what basically what I was saying was that the, I'm very grateful for the program because you learn the practical side of the field as well as the academic. And you're not always wondering, uh, would I have enjoyed one area more than the other? And it also is very great because when you leave the program and you go into the field practicing or you go into research, you're not sitting there thinking, what do I do? Do I have to start from the beginning? Do I have to learn um, everything over again? I actually just got back from the Bahamas and everything I learned in theory and uh, practicum was shown the Bahamas. And I was working with people in the UN, with uh, UNICEF, with the International Red Cross, with other local organizations in the States. And I was working on par with them and they were just impressed on the level just coming in from the master's program and how I operated and how much I knew about humanitarian aid. Uh, the program is also uh, incredible in that it gives you practical experience when you leave. Um, I was, I did an internship with Israel Aid, um, like was said before, we did uh, uh, search and rescue drills, we did, uh, we went to all these simulations, so you really get to see everything from each point of the emergency management field, and you become very well-rounded and are able to seek out your interests without wondering, uh, was this right for me, or, or do I want to do this, do I want to do that? Thank you, Zach. And I'd like now uh, for Riel, who is a, a student in the present cohort, which is actually had to uh, adapt, the program had to adapt to the, the current crisis that all of us are experiencing. So we were both studying on disaster management or crisis management, but also we had to act in order to uh, ensure uh, that the program does not uh, um, get delayed in any way and does not, there's not any, nor any consequences on the ability of the students to continue after the completion of the program. So Ariel, can you uh, maybe uh, relate to that and some of your experiences? You're still mute. You're mute. No? Good? Now we, yes. Okay. Sorry guys, so once again, my name is Ariel. Uh, I'm a current student in the 2019-2020 uh, cohort for the MPH. Um, so to explain a little bit of kind of why I decided to head down this track, um, I was originally, uh, I, I discovered an organization um, that Buria had mentioned, its name is Israel Aid. And I discovered this organization and I knew that I wanted, I, I had a yearning, honestly, to function in something along the lines of what they were doing. And so in order to kind of get to that point, I realized that I didn't have the expertise. So I, I wanted to volunteer. I wanted to um, assist uh, in kind of some of their efforts. But I really, I knew that I, I didn't have the expertise for this. So I knew that I, in order to eventually contribute in this field, I would have to gain this expertise. So I think that Israel, first and foremost, stands as kind of one of the beacons of humanitarian aid. And I knew that if I were to come to Israel and partake in this program, I would certainly get, gain that expertise and knowledge and the tech kind of the capacity to assist uh, in disaster relief and humanitarian projects. And so, so far, I must say, um, I, it's, this is one of the best, I think, investments of my time in terms of kind of professional, long-term professional pursuits. And I know that every, so similar to as the rest of the panelists had mentioned, um, I think that it's a, it provides you a skill set that is most definitely interdisciplinary. So not only do you gain the theory in the classrooms, you also have the opportunity to partake in research. You also have the opportunity to partake in, in internships. So similar to what Zach had mentioned, I am actually currently working um, with Israel. I had the opportunity to kind of follow my dream and work alongside the Israel aid team in Tel Aviv. And as a whole, the people and the professors and the experience that you will gain is something just 
indispensable and the skill set that you gain is honestly from from the bottom of my heart it's been the best allocation of my time uh, and also just the warmest interactions i've had with all of the professors all of the um ex experts that are teaching us and you will no questions asked you will not regret a moment of your time in israel and your time throughout the program um, so I will just say that sometimes in life you feel that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And this is my feeling with this program, that um, this is exactly the, what it was that I was seeking um, in terms of expertise and knowledge, and I found it, and it was specifically in this program. So uh, it's definitely something worth considering and definitely an opportunity that should be seized um, because it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity if this is the direction that you wish to go in. Thank you very much, uh, Ariel. And again, I invite all of you uh, who are with us, all the participants, if you have uh, questions that you would like to direct both uh, uh, to us or uh, to our uh, alumni or, or to Ariel, uh, you're welcome. And we will start addressing uh, the questions in a minute. Uh, I would like to uh, approach Gilly, who, as I've said, is uh, one of the founders of uh, um, the program, both the Israeli track and the international uh, uh, track. Uh, Gilly, would you like to uh, add and address our uh, participants? A uh, few things that I want to add, which are, I think are very important. First of all, we are working in small groups. The class is not 100 students. So we believe that the groups has to be small in order that we will work as in the field in a small group. So this is something that's very important for us. And it's uh, uh, every year, it's like a family that we have. And you, I think you can see it from our alumni. Second thing is very important for us is the teamwork. We believe in teamwork as you will see in, in the field. So we want not uh, uh, the students to work only by themselves. We uh, believe a lot with uh, uh, teamwork. And this is another important thing that we bring. And as Bruria said, and I think is the most important thing, is really to combine bet between the academic knowledge and the hands-on, which we try to do all over the year. And for example, this year when uh, you have the COVID-19, we, we, we are bringing to the class uh, things that are happening today. So it's not only what has hap happened in the past and what was written, we are working on that field on the academic level, but also uh, on, on the field and are bringing all of that to the class. And the last important thing is really that we try to uh, take the students uh, uh, to see and to meet with uh, important people in Israel, to see very important uh, exercises and drills, and to hear and to meet with uh, people who are responsible for decision-making in order to, to understand how they take their decisions during emergency. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Gilly. And I would uh, uh, now like to address uh, uh, the questions that have been uh, uh, raised. So I will start with the questions um, from Vivian. That Vivian is from Brazil, um, is going to graduate uh, from uh, uh, dentistry. And the question is, is the bachelor's degree uh, acceptable? And the answer is yes. As we've said, this is a multidisciplinary uh, program. Because it's a multidisciplinary program, we're looking for um, people that have uh, already have their uh, bachelor's degree in diverse uh, uh, areas. We have, a, we have uh, candidates that come from the medical professions, we have some that come from uh, sociology, um, we have some that come from engineering, arts, uh, social sciences, and so on. Why this uh, uh, diverse array of, uh, of backgrounds? Because we believe that a, a true and, and uh, an effective response to any type of disaster is built on the ability to have a very wide perspective of the different elements. What happening, what's happening to the governance uh, uh, systems? What is happening to the populations? How can the first responders 
uh, be in communication with one another? How do we communicate the different messages, the different uh, um, directives uh, uh, to the publics and so on? So in order for us to actually be able to provide a good response, we need people that come from the different uh, um, arenas and the different types of, of uh, um, occupations. So both uh, any the, the uh, basic um, requirements for a program is any bachelor's degree with uh, uh, the grade of uh, uh, 75 out of 100 uh, or the equivalent according to the, the different systems. And the, the applicants have to um, undergo uh, uh, interview, which we do through uh, uh, the Zoom in order for us as the faculty to learn your background, your, your uh, vision, your, um, the different uh, motivation that actually uh, stand at the basis of your uh, planning and academic uh, uh, study period and uh, uh, why you actually want to be integrated in the uh, field of disaster management. So uh, having the bachelor's degree on the one hand, um, having the interview on the other hand, explaining to us what attracts you to this field and what is your motivation, how you see your five-year and 10-year plan, uh, and how does that fit with uh, uh, studying in this uh, uh, program. Those are actually the elements that stand at the basis of our uh, decision uh, to accept uh, applicants. I would like uh, uh, to have another question. This was from uh, uh, Rodrigo. Rodrigo uh, states that the background is from uh, a business administration and is uh, uh, looking for uh, a change or move in uh, uh, the career. And uh, as for your questions, are you a good fit for the program? So in order to answer that, we would need to interview you. Um, if you, um, as I've said, uh, if you have the, the uh, minimum standard that is needed academically, uh, the, the grade that I've stated, uh, the equivalent of, of at least 75 uh, uh, to be able to uh, apply uh, uh, for the program. As for your background in business administration, the answer is, is of course, yes. Because as I've said, we're looking for diversity. You will find within the cohort people that come from different backgrounds and uh, um, this is something that uh, uh, we feel that enriches the ability to, to learn for all of us, both the students and the faculty. The second question of uh, um, Rodrigo stated that you have uh, developed an app for decentralized housing development. Wow, that looks very, very uh, interesting. Does TAU have a platform for uh, students that look into innovation? The answer is very much yes. I showed before at the uh, beginning of this uh, uh, presentation that TAU has uh, a, a unit that is specifically targeted uh, to help uh, uh, students that have innovations, that would like to write pa patents, that want to uh, uh, promote uh, innovative uh, developments and so on. So we very much want to welcome these types of initiatives, both in the program within uh, the academic studies, as well as uh, with our uh, uh, remote, which is the uh, industrial unit in the university, which provides help in all the aspects of uh, uh, developing a uh, different type of uh, innovation. Noah is asking uh, uh, where you can see uh, the course syllabi for the epidemiology or actually all the other uh, uh, courses that are taken. Uh, you can access our uh, website. Uh, if you go into the, um, the website of the international uh, program of uh, emergency and disaster management, you will find the different um, courses, um, a brief syllabi of what is taught in each and every uh, um, course that is uh, uh, taken throughout the, um, the program. And also, if you want some additional uh, information, uh, then you can um, uh, write to us uh, through the email and we will provide you with any additional uh, information or any uh, question that interests you.
another question is, is it uh, uh, possible to apply to a, a program in a, a PhD in epidemiology or in public health? The degree that we uh, uh, provide is a master's of public health. And Tel Aviv University, as I've said, is uh, internationally uh, recognized uh, globally and certainly within the United States. So uh, we actually have already several uh, students that have, con several of our uh, alumni that have continued their uh, um, studies to uh, a PhD, some of them here in Israel, two of them even uh, uh, each in, uh, in the program, and others who have uh, pursued uh, the um, international uh, PhD uh, programs uh, other places, including in the United States, so the answer is uh, certainly. Another question um, was, do we, what support do we offer the alumni in their job search? And do we assist them in connecting to big organizations around the world? Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like, uh, Zach, would you like to relate to these questions, uh, um, showing your personal uh, involvement in that? Yeah. Um, so at the, when I first left the program, when you start to search for a job, it can be a very uh, daunting task. And um, at first, when you're looking around, a lot of places are looking for minimum experience. Um, I used, uh, I looked at Israel um, through my internship with them, but I did go through the program and Bruria actually did help me um, put some connections. I asked professors to see if they knew of anyone or uh, any place that are hiring any jobs that I may be best suited for. And the department, I have to say, they did, uh, they did an extraordinary job uh, with the connections that I met through the department, through uh, my time there as a student, through guest speakers. And afterwards, uh, like it was said, like Kelly said, it's a family and family always helps family out. And I know that they will continue to be there for their alum and for their current students for a long time. And it's not like any other school. Throughout my bachelor's degree, you finish the program and you're off and the department is kind of done helping you. I didn't even feel in Canada they did help you as much as the department did in Israel. Uh, you do feel like you are being handed off in a very good nature. And if you are looking to move into a professional career in emergency management, this is absolutely the right place to go to um, because it's not, you're not taking a leap to the next step in your career. You're only taking a minor step from the program into your career. Thank you, uh, uh, Zach. And I would like to um, elaborate on that uh, uh, questions. Uh, we do not have uh, in the university nor in the program, a specific unit that uh, um, directs you to different types of positions. But we do help uh, in several ways. Uh, the first one is we have learned that uh, in order to be um, actually an attractive uh, uh, candidate for many of the positions, uh, many organizations look for both theoretical uh, um, uh, knowledge and practical experience. And this is why we started to facilitate the uh, internship program in order for the, um, you know, for a graduate, when they graduate the program, they can have in their CV, they can show both, uh, of course, the academic achievements, but also the experience that they have started. Uh, and uh, actually, some of our uh, graduates already work in those organizations in which they uh, interned. And we have those internships both during the uh, period of time that uh, the students are here uh, in the um, 10 months that, of their studies, and also the ones who would like to intern uh, after the completion of, of uh, um, the curriculum, and then uh, they, they would like to intern in some international uh, uh, organization. So we help with that. Um, more so, we have, as we are a program that is very much connected to the field, as I've said, both nationally and internationally, uh, and we feel uh, um, a real responsibility as a family, as, as uh, Ariel and Zach have said, um, towards our uh, alumni, we help. And so, for example, uh, uh, the, the example for Zach, I reached out to uh, some of my uh, colleagues 
uh, in his case in, in Canada, in other cases in, in other countries and so on. Each one, this is tailor-made according to the expectations. So we're very, very uh, uh, willing to help. We both want you to actually complete the program when you have uh, the right uh, competencies and the right um, um, characteristics that you can show uh, to prospective uh, employers and also uh, utilize our connections and connectivities in, in the disaster management and the humanitarian uh, action world uh, in order to, to uh, help. I want to uh, go to uh, another question. This was asked by, by Jonathan. Um, Jonathan asked if we only accept 25 students. The answer is yes. Uh, we believe in our Israeli track, we accept 40 students. In our international track, we've learned that this is something that uh, uh, each student uh, uh, you know, needs, that the attention needs to be able to uh, uh, be acclimatized both to the academic life and, and the different country and uh, uh, living in, uh, in a different uh, culture and so on. So this is the maximal, uh, um, this, this is the maximal number of uh, applicants uh, which are accepted to uh, uh, the program. Um, usually uh, most year, uh, uh, we aim even to, to, to the number of, of 20. Uh, not uh, 25, but this year, for example, because uh, I think the COVID-19 made a big difference and, and um, the recognition of the importance of, of the competency for disaster management has uh, uh, been so, uh, um, so publicly uh, um, demanded and required and discussed uh, that uh, uh, most probably there will be uh, uh, 25 uh, um, students which we will uh, uh, accept. Uh, but no more than that. We cannot, because otherwise it would not be a program that uh, can do everything that we actually uh, aim for, including the hands-on experiences, including the participations in drills and exercises and, and field trips and so on, uh, in which we, we would like uh, everyone to get the attention that is uh, um, so relevant. Um, as for a question for the start date of the program, the program starts in mid-October. That's where we start, and then it's three consecutive uh, uh, semesters uh, uh, finishing. Uh, in August is the uh, graduation ceremony, although there's still the um, research uh, uh, project that some students do it within the, the 10 months of their studying. For example, Ariel is a very good example for that. She's already completed her uh, uh, final project and has written an article which is now uh, going to be submitted for uh, a peer review uh, uh, journal. Bria, can I add in just with regard to the cohort size? Um, yes. I think that the, this kind of number makes it that much more of a unique experience. Um, I, would, I can say on behalf of myself and kind of my cohort class, we are so close knit and it makes that the journey of the program so much more enjoyable when we are able to get to know each other on such a level and interact in small groups and work with each other in, in this um, kind of in this capacity it makes the process and the journey of not only living in a, a different country but the entire journey of this master's degree a much more pleasant and much more unique experience and warm experience at that so i highly this is uh, something that is a great um, aspect of this program. It's the close-knit community that is formed. Thank you, uh, Ariel. Um, I would like to um, uh, now uh, refer to another question that was uh, uh, raised. Uh, this is from uh, uh, Brajas from uh, India. Um, he's asked uh, about uh, uh, scholarships and I'm, I, I would uh, think that uh, many of you are interested in uh, uh, scholarships. I, I want to say one thing and then uh, actually uh, ask uh, or read from our uh, TU International School uh, to also relate to the, um, to the possibilities. First, specifically for students coming from India, uh, there is a scholarship. Uh, it's a Tata scholarship, which uh, covers uh, actually tuition and uh, uh, also some of the expenses for accommodations and, and so on. Uh, and this is specifically for uh, students uh, coming from uh, India. And our program is one of the programs that is recognized by, by uh, Tata. 
so that's a possibility. Uh, there's also one more thing that everyone concerning scholarship needs to know. In order to apply for scholarships, you need to first be accepted to the program, okay? All the sources of scholarships um, first uh, require uh, the acceptance. So this is the, uh, the primary step, and then you can apply uh, for the scholarship. Uh, Orit, can you uh, kindly also uh, relate to scholarships at large? Hi, everybody. I've been um, hiding, but uh, uh, actively listening. I'm the marketing director at uh, Tel Aviv University International. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, regarding scholarships, um, uh, we, aside from what Guria mentioned, we have regional scholarships like the India uh, Tata one. We also have specific uh, TAU funded scholarships. Um, the newest one, I'm just looking at it now, so uh, excuse me if I'm not uh, facing the screen, is um, a COVID-19 uh, support fund. Uh, we recently uh, were able to announce uh, a scholarship between uh, up to $5,000. It's a merit-based scholarship that is, that is um, applicable to full degree students coming in at uh, this year 2020, 2021. Um, and it, so that is something that is worth checking out and I will share the scholarship uh, funding uh, link on this, uh, on this chat here. Um, and in addition, of course, if uh, there are Massa scholarships for people interested in Massa and other non-related um, university funds that can be searched on and, and we have a list on our website as a good start. Thank you uh, uh, very much, uh, Orit. Um, another question uh, relates from uh, Simon, a pediatric intensive care uh, physician from the UK. Uh, two questions. Would this course be appropriate for a senior collision or would I be too old? So I'll, let me first address this question. We've had um, students from all ages. Actually, the one who has now started, and she's the head of our alumni uh, association, uh, she came to the program when she was already a PhD, um, a professor in literature, which later on um, did um, a training as a nurse and following her career as a nurse came to our uh, uh, program. And she was actually a, a very distinct leader in, in the program. Uh, she was very, very well liked and respected by everyone. I, when I'm saying everyone, I'm talking, first of all, by the students, and uh, uh, second, by, by, the, um, by the professors and the faculty. And, and her experience was so unique and it was so special and contributed, as, as I've said, we are all about diversity, diverse backgrounds, diverse countries, diverse ages and so on, so that uh, um, everyone has a uniqueness and everyone brings their own perspective. And so uh, uh, the student that I'm talking about, uh, uh, her name is the, uh, Judith, uh, she since, when she uh, was in the program, she was actually uh, a new uh, immigrant coming to uh, the country and uh, she's made the Aliyah. And now she's, uh, as I've said, she's the, the mother of, of the alumni uh, that she's now starting uh, uh, the program. So that would be my answer to your uh, uh, first uh, uh, question. Um, the second question, would the course be suitable to allow you to use the qualification to act as an advisor to NGOs or official bodies? Um, this, this is something more tricky. I'll tell you why, because uh, I'm not uh, familiar with any organization or body that actually has a specific um, criteria of what they're looking for um, in, in, uh, in, in a in a role of an advisor. It's always specifically to what they're looking for. So for example, if they're looking for an advisor on um, disaster management in, in the medical uh, role, and you would come with the MPH, and specifically in disaster management, and that was the role that they were looking for, then of course, uh, the answer would be that it would be very relevant. But it's not that you can take uh, uh, the degree and then say, I am an advisor. Okay, I, I don't think that the work, um, the, the work realm uh, uh, works in this way, but it certainly gives you um, a, a, an official 
MPH, which and in, it's an official MPH, uh, which specifically uh, you emphasized uh, on disaster management. So of course it would make you uh, that much more attractive to organizations that are looking for advisors in uh, uh, the field of uh, disaster management. Um, Rebecca, you wanted to say something I can see in the chat. My cohort had a mix of different backgrounds, medical doctors, sociologists, development work, business, uh, and so on. Um, yes. Uh, can you all see the chat and you can see the response of Ariel and, and Rebecca among our participants? Yeah, everyone can see everything. And there's also the, um, we, there's a question and answer box with, which some of you have been using and we've been answering um, as many questions as we physically can there. Um, but there's a few more about asking about scholarships, but I think that if you go back, once this is over and you kind of go back through the recording, you'll be able to find everything. Um, That's a very important uh, piece of information. And also you can see in the chat, uh, you can see the link uh, to both uh, information concerning the costs and the funding and the scholarships and uh, the COVID-19 fund. So, so even if you uh, didn't write it uh, as we uh, go along now, uh, you can access the information later. Uh, the TU International School will send all the participants in our uh, uh, webinar, both the recording of this meeting. So you can also look at the chat and look at all uh, the information. Um, Rodrigo, you have uh, uh, written that uh, um, you were disconnected and you're not sure if I responded. Well, if you weren't here when I responded to your question, then you can hear it in, uh, in the recording because I did relate to, to your questions and you can access it uh, uh, there. Um, Eliza, Eliza is asking if it is necessary to do the master in order to be part of the PhD program. The answer is if you're looking, you, you cannot, uh, in our university, and I think it's in most universities, you cannot uh, start your PhD without having a master's program. So if you want to uh, specifically enter a PhD program, you need a master's degree. If you already have a master's degree from another field and you're looking to specifically uh, uh, focus on uh, a PhD in uh, uh, an area uh, of disaster management, then this can be checked individually. It depends on the connectivity between what you have learned. Um, sometimes it is possible with maybe some completions of courses in order to give you uh, the basic knowledge that is needed. Uh, but if you don't as yet have a, um, any master's program, then a PhD, at least in our university, this is not an option. Let us see what uh, other questions there are. What is the deadline to apply for the scholarship just uh, uh, mentioned? Um, Orit, would you like to relate to that? Um, yes, I'll just have to check and, and um, get back to you. Okay. Uh, in any case, I, I think one important element concerning scholarships, and this is true concerning all types of, of scholarships, no matter what the source is, that you should do it as soon as possible because many of them, you know, the deadlines are uh, um, near. And even if they don't, if they've already approved some, they have a limit of funds that they can actually uh, allocate. And so as soon as you do it, uh, the better. The same goes for those candidates who would like after their uh, acceptance uh, and the starting of, of the program to actually uh, um, receive dormitories. And we have dormitories within the campus, but not enough for all students. And the dormitories are, are uh, targeted both for the international students as well as the Israeli students. Then again, uh, these types of applications should be submitted as soon as possible because um, th there is a limit on, on the places. And, um, and I just like to add, Maria, that the uh, scholarship is granted only um, after the, uh, after the uh, 
the uh, tuition has been paid and the acceptance has been made. So the earlier you apply and go through the application process, the earlier then you can uh, uh, um, offer your candidacy for, uh, for a scholarship and the process begins. Uh, Moises from uh, uh, Mexico, uh, we've related to the information concerning uh, uh, scholarships. And uh, if you uh, weren't with us when we were uh, um, speaking about it, then we will send uh, everyone, including you, the recording as well as the information where to uh, apply to and so that you can access the information concerning uh, the scholarship. Um, none of you have asked the question which I would like to uh, relate to uh, briefly, and that is what happens if there's a second wave of, of COVID-19 and if the international uh, um, you know, uh, borders are not uh, as yet open because many countries have not yet uh, resumed flights and so on. Uh, so first of all, when COVID-19 uh, uh, started, our university, including our program, uh, immediately switched from uh, frontal uh, uh, meetings into online uh, teaching. And this is the situation still now. Uh, the decision uh, if we can have uh, the summer uh, uh, program opened already uh, as a regular uh, uh, teaching uh, will be made uh, on a national level on, uh, in mid-June. Uh, but we are hoping to have it, uh, the, the regular studies resume for our summer um, semester. Um, but if, you know, none of us know, and this is part of the characteristics of, of disaster management, if this will not be uh, possible, we will continue uh, the program as an online program until it is possible for all uh, uh, the students to return back uh, uh, to Israel. The same, if there will still be restrictions, which some of the students will not be able to leave their countries, uh, despite the registration and acceptance to the program because of the constraints of, of COVID-19 or other types of, of disasters, then we will give the um, opportunity uh, for those who can be with us to study uh, in, in class, but uh, the classes will also be um, uh, transmitted and uh, um, related uh, through the online mechanism. We will teach in classes that we can actually broadcast all the lessons. And so uh, the interactiveness of the study period will, uh, uh, will continue as, uh, as planned. Uh, we do not let anything, and I hope that will be the case, always uh, you know, um, deter us from, from completing a program as planned. We modify and adjust it according to the type of events. And this is what disaster management is all, uh, all about. Um, our time is up. And uh, I'm sorry if we haven't addressed some of, of the questions. I tried to address uh, all of the ones, but if someone still did not uh, receive uh, a response to the question, then please, uh, you're welcome to write to us and we will address uh, um, in writing your, uh, your question and your uh, uh, queries. I would like to uh, briefly ask any of our panelists, uh, Gilly, Ariel, uh, Zach, uh, Rebecca, or uh, Orit from the TAU International, would you like to add something before I say the parting words? Go ahead, Zach. Um, so the one thing I wanted to add in, which I forgot to mention before, when I was looking at different programs uh, internationally for emergency disaster management, one of the biggest things that appealed to me about this program was how well-rounded it was. A lot of programs uh, make you a specialist in an area. They make you very knowledgeable within maybe emergencies, disasters, or within uh, urban disasters. But the skills you learn through public policy, you learn some economics, some uh, hazard to global warming, health-related effects, uh, everything, logistics skills, management skills, and leadership, all of these are such vital skills that all employers look for that many applicants lack. And so when you graduate from this program, you're not just graduating with an MPH in emergency management, which you are very knowledgeable in, you're also graduating with all these additional skills that are very sought after by many employers in which you can apply into any field really, if you want to go into politics, if you want to go into business, if you would like to go into healthcare. So you're not 
going into a specific program where you're limiting yourself into a specific field. You can really take all, these, all this knowledge that you learn and apply it throughout the rest of your life. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Zach. Uh, Rebecca, Ariel, would you like to add anything? I will just say that the program did an exceptional job adapting to the given situation with COVID. Um, so given the situation, obviously we were, most of us decided to leave back to our home countries for the given period of time. But uh, the program did uh, everything and more to make sure that everyone was comfortable, that all of their needs were being met, that everyone was, uh, classes were being recorded for people that, for example, were on the west coast of the United States, which for those people, it was much more difficult to attend classes live. So I just want to assure you that if and if something does happen where we have a second wave, that everything will be, I'm sure that everything will be done to ensure that everyone's needs within the cohorts are met. And uh, yeah, this is all I wanted to say. Thank you. Um, I'll add a few points. There's been a few questions um, relating to kind of what happens after the program and what you do after. And I know that Bria mentioned, uh, and also Zach mentioned a few different aspects. Um, and I think the interdisciplinary aspect of the program is really what makes it a key factor when you're applying for jobs after, um, because you can really go in any direction. We have, I know from my cohort, we had people that went into, um, that continued, that we were either doing development work before and continued doing development work. Um, we had some that were medical doctors and then um, kind of ventured more into the public health field. Um, and one of our, for example, one of, uh, one of the physicians in my class actually was doing relief work up in Israel and Northern Israel on the Syrian border with Syrian refugees. Um, we had another student of ours who worked with the disaster management authority in India and is still a high ranking official there. Um, uh, you have people like me, I work for a global nonprofit right now. I'm actually directing all of their communications. Um, and we work with innovation, technology, 3D printing, local manufacturing, um, specifically for people with uh, living with disabilities, the elderly, veterans, et cetera. Um, so we're kind of like a flip side of that. Um, we have other, another one of my cl um, classmates is working um, in the US for, in Philadelphia actually, for uh, one of the big hospital systems. Um, so really the, if you're looking at, I know that a lot of the questions were like, what are the, what's professional demand after this, but it really depends on what your individual skills are um, and kind of how you, how you market yourself, but also how you figure out what direction you want to go. And when you're in the program thinking like, well, I really like the epidemiological aspects of it. So maybe in order for me to really execute on that, I need to continue my education or maybe I have a background in this already and I can go work for the CDC or something of that sort. Um, or, um, so it really depends um, on who you are as a person and what skills you have and what your interests are. Um, and this program kind of takes all of your interests and then complements them with practical skills. Um, and the last, there was also a few other questions I think on earning perspective and, and um, I think I answered that in the questionnaire box, but it really depends on if you're working in the public sector or the private sector, private sector salaries are always higher. Um, and it also depends on where you are in the world. If you're working in the US, salaries are higher there than they are in Israel um, and also a bit more so in Europe. Um, so it really depends on you as a person. Um, but if any of you all have other questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you very much. Uh... Rebecca, uh, Gilly, before we say goodbye. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone to joining us, especially thanks to Ariel, Zach, and Rebecca for your kind words. And uh, just to tell you that uh, each question that you have, don't hesitate to ask to send us an email. We'd be very happy to answer every question that you have. Uh, maybe not 24-7, not but you will re get your answers as fast as possible. And those of you who are interesting, please do it as fast as possible because we have only 25 seats and some of them are already occupied. 
I would like to uh, thank all of you. First of all, uh, all our uh, participants, all the attendees uh, for taking an interest in our program. We would love to, uh, to have you here in Israel. Unfortunately, we can't have all of you because as we've said, uh, we have a limit of uh, uh, 25 students. Uh, um, and this year, the, the places are, are um, actually being uh, already filled uh, uh, early because of the COVID-19. Uh, uh, um, but we would love uh, uh, to have you uh, to get to meet you and uh, have more and more leaders in disaster management uh, actually uh, getting out there in the world, uh, making all of our societies more resilient and, and safer. So thank you for being with us. Uh, as Gilly said, I would like to uh, uh, thank, first of all, our alumni, Rebecca and Zach for joining us and our present student, uh, uh, Ariel. Uh, I would like to thank Gilly um, for his ongoing uh, uh, contribution and, and for being uh, uh, the, actually the spirit and, and the content of, uh, of the program. And I would also like to thank uh, the, the team, uh, David and Orit from the uh, TAU International School for being with us, for uh, being partners uh, in all the um, you know, initiatives uh, uh, concerning the international uh, uh, studies. So thank you all and be safe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.